All right. And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Here to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling, all the action inside and out, the backstage news drama. We also talk about um, superstar injury updates, inactive statuses, contract negotiations, extensions, and new signings from, uh, you know, promotions. From WWE to AEW to TNA to Ring of Honor to the GCW to the NWA, Stardom to New Japan Professional Wrestling, who makes major news headlines in the world with professional wrestling. We talk about it here on this show. So, uh, yeah, make sure you tune in. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick. We had our WWE SmackDown review, and then we talked about a little bit about what could possibly happen on Monday Night Raw. It's happening right now. Can't wait to check it out. Got a spoiler alert from my man, Logan James, saying that we have an awesome main event plan. We got Tiffany Stratton. Teaming up with uh, Rhea Ripley against uh, Liv Morgan and um, and uh, Raquel Rodriguez, so that should be uh, should be pretty cool. Can't wait to you know can't, can't wait to watch that. All right, so let's go and jump on into some WWE bad blood talk. But before we do any of that, once again, hit up that super chat, those super stickers, because you guys are super awesome. Together, we will make this podcast bigger, better, and stronger than ever. Um, we we need your guys to support thousand and ten percent. You know, for us to keep bringing you guys even more awesome sports content. Uh, Monday through Friday, um, you know, we we would love you guys to interact first and foremost, a thousand and ten percent. We love that you guys have opinions. We love that you feel comfortable enough to share them on air. That's super cool. That's super awesome. Definitely love and respect that about the viewers. So, uh, you know, hit up that super chat. It's the dollar sign below that chat box. And obviously send it in a super chat. Whatever you put down is going to be guaranteed and featured on the show a thousand and ten percent. So don't be shy and hit up that super chat, those super stickers, because once again, you guys are super, super duper amazing. And uh, yeah, once again, if it's the, you know, if that's not your thing, hit up the gsmcpodcast.net, uh, hit up the tips and donations link, you know, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, um, all positive stuff, hopefully. But of course, criticism is part of the game. Feedback is a gift. So just remember to Superman punch that like a subscribe button. To the show, follow the show, follow the network, and uh, yeah, we can have an amazing, uh, amazing relationship. All right, let's talk about some WWE bad, but overall, like I said, it was um, it was pretty badass. It was a great, it was you know, especially headed into the PG uh, thirteen, you know, kind of era here. But uh, I don't know. All right, first match we have right off the bat, we had Bianca Belair, uh, Naomi, also uh, Jade Cargill introduced themselves and also introduced this match, Hell in a Cell. Um, I gotta be honest. I thought it was, uh, I thought they, they did, uh, they did good. I feel like they did good. They, this was probably a perfect way to end this rivalry. The way the match was, there was blood shed by both superstars, which was a, which was a necessity. You know, a lot of Drew McIntyre's matches, even back in his career in independent circuit. Um, he, he doesn't like to bleed, like, you know, which is by all means, you know, um, having that kind of spot, you know, like, you know, a lot of, People, negative publicity about, you know, cutting. Also, you know, real chair shots or, you know, weaponry to the, you know, could cause the lacerations to the face or any any part of the body, to be honest. But this was, I think this was a perfect way. That's why if they continue to keep their feud going on Raw, or Sm- on Raw I, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't like it. I would like one of them to go to SmackDown. That'd be pretty cool to kind of have a fresh start. Um, like I said, on this on Monday Night Raw, I'm not sure if any of these, uh, but if any of these guys are going to be on it, it would be interesting to kind of see, uh, to see if they were, you know, their future, what they want to talk about, and what promos they're going to hit. But uh, I thought it was kind of cool to see Drew McIntyre busted open for the first time I've watched him. Got to be honest, um, there was a good amount of violence, you know, to kind of put this uh, rivalry to bed. Um, I thought they were going to bust out thumbtacks. Obviously, didn't really work out. You saw uh, Drew McIntyre bust out the beads, and I was like. Oh, God, that's crazy. Which backfired. You know, obviously, he got hurt for doing that. Usually, that's the spot. Like, usually, when you see tables, uh, you know, come out, if you set it up yourself or if you put, like, thumbtacks on the ground or anything, like, you, you're probably, you're you're designing that spot for you. Like, you know what I mean? So, I wasn't really surprised that, uh, you know, he kind of went down under, you know, with that. So, I thought that was kind of cool. Now, one thing that I, can't, you know, kind of had the bag on, CM Punk did get the win, which, you know, which was the right thing to do. But I think I, ba- I have a, ba- you know, kind of have a bone to pick with WWE is the last couple of Hell in the Cell matches, you know, hasn't really been Attitude Era-esque. You know, they're always just fighting inside the cage, like, you know what I mean? Which is still pretty damn entertaining and it's cool. But, you know, I'm used to, like, people, like, you know, 
fighting on top of the cage, or maybe I've just been playing uh, too much WWE uh, 2K uh, or Raw vs. SmackDown games when I was younger, you know, to the point where, you know, you can fight on top of the cell, throw somebody off and like throw them through the cell. And it was, you know, it was it was cool, you know, so um, obviously very dangerous, you know, so I can imagine why WWE wouldn't want to do that. The cell is, um, man, 25 feet high, I think it is. I think it's 25 or 20. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But uh, I don't know. It's all in all, it's it's cool. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me being a selfish attitude error fan, being like, jump out of the cage. Come on. Don't be a wuss. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, so we had Bailey uh, taking on Nia Jax, uh, the referee, uh, from the moment. Not from the moment, but when she was taken out, I knew something was going to happen. Some crazy Tiffany Stratton came in, obviously paying dividends. Uh, with her money to bank briefcase looking like she was going to cash in once again. And, uh, you know, didn't really happen. You saw Nia Jax catch her again for the third time. You know, it just makes me question how, you know, how how long is, um you know, we're going to keep doing this. Like, you know what I mean? You know, how long is Tiffany Stratton going to be flirting with, uh, you know, cashing in? You know, I think she's kind of flirting with this cash in a little bit too much hinting at this betrayal too much to the point where he might not, you know, it probably will never come to a shock because it's like, okay, she's the money in the bank briefcase holder. So, you know, obviously any angle she takes in towards in terms of um, how she's going to cash in on Nia Jack, not really much of a surprise, but uh, I don't know. Just still having that surprise element is um, pretty damn cool. But, um, you know, kind of like what my man uh, Logan James said, we have a main event tonight when you're going to have the money in the bank winner, um, on Raw, possibly maybe a cash in on Liv Morgan, which would be insane. She would have to stay on Monday Night Raw, which at this point, I don't know. Nia Jackson, her like like I mentioned before when I was talking about WWE SmackDown, it's not your traditional like sidekick. Like you know, what I mean, she still holds her ground even when Nia Jax is you know physically abusing her, mentally abusing her, um, you know, vocally. She's still able. You know, she still looks at Nia Jax. She's like. Fine, keep talking, keep talking. I would say one word, but I can't on air. But uh, you know, um, I think it's gonna be a you know whatever happens. I feel like WWE is doing this women's money in the bank thing, you know, right? Obviously, Nia Jax retaining the championship. Poor Bailey once again gets screwed out. Well, not screwed out. You know, obviously there has to be a little bit of you know you got you got to muddy the waters a little bit here. You know. All right, so then we had Damian Priest take on Finn Balor. Um, I gotta be honest, uh, Priest got the win, which I knew he was going to, um, Finn Balor, I, I think he looks weak, I think WWE's doing a terrible job with his character, he, uh, doesn't look like he can hold a WWE singles championship, like, even if he was the Intercontinental Champion, he would look weak, if he was a WWE Champion, he would look weak, and because of that, his tag team with JD McDonough, their title reign looks weak, so, I'm not too exactly sure, uh, what, you know, what WWE's trying to do with Finn, he came out with a new look, you know, kind of uh, his theme song was different, maybe hinting at a potential, um, you know, um, leaving Judgment Day, which wouldn't be, you know, a giant shock. But um, I don't know. It's, you know, not really to my liking. It was a good match, you know, but, I, you know, then in the news media, you find out Damian Priest and Finn Balor both feel like this isn't over. So it's going to be interesting to find out how WWE makes new, innovative you know, ideas or match types or something like that to kind of keep people, you know, on the phone in terms of, um, you know, when is this going to end? Is Damian Priest going to um, de- develop a develop a crew to take on the Judgment Day at um, at War Games? So that know, should be should be pretty crazy. All right, um, uh, just kind of briefly, kind of go over it. Um, we had uh, a Triple H announced um, that uh, the titles aren't going to be up for grabs. At Crown Jewel, there's going to be champion versus champion, the women's and the men's, um, you know, but they're going to get a shiny new belt, which is which is cool, I guess. Uh, you saw Gunther come out to talk about it with Triple H, then Bill Goldberg interrupt, well, not interrupted, but he was forced out of the stands once again, flirting with the idea that Bill Goldberg's going to return to WWE and challenge Gunther for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which all in all is... Mm, not really my cup of tea, but let's talk about this match. We have the WWE Women's World Heavyweight Championship match between Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley with Dominic Mysterio hanging in a shark cage. Um, I, I thought it was kind of crazy. Usually the shark cage is hung up of, above the ring. 
Uh, it wasn't uh, this time, which is, uh, you know, was kind of different. Um, uh, the shark cage. Also, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was for Ricardo Rodriguez to return. All in all, it was a thumbs up. You know, it was kind of great to see her come back to WWE. But the way she kind of did it was a little awkward, you know, and I'm not sure if that makes any sense. But, you know, did you see her come out to fight Rhea? Definitely hinting at a future future feud between those two ladies. But I don't know. It just didn't seem like it It didn't, like, hit as much. It didn't hit home as much as I thought it could have. Maybe that's the right way to put it. But uh, overall, like, I think, you know, she's back. Liv Morgan had to retain the championship. Um, so she won. She defeated Rhea Ripley twice. She uh, Rhea Ripley doesn't have any more chances. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to find out who steps up next to challenge Liv Morgan. Uh, but I don't know if that was, uh, that was pretty crazy. That was, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Um, main event time. Main event. We had the bloodline taking on. Uh, oh, yeah. Before, you know. See, I don't know. It just doesn't look. That like I don't know, but like I said, like I, maybe I'm holding, maybe I'm too, maybe I'm too close, but maybe I wanted Raquel Rodriguez to come back in like a, like a bigger, like I don't know, I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, so we had the Bloodline taking on Cody Rhodes and uh, the OTC Roman Reigns. Uh, this was pretty cool. I you know the the University of Arkansas, their marching band came out and they performed. Um, you know, like uh, with the Cody Rhodes who came out with the mask, which was different. I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, you saw the first time, uh, referee, wait, first time ref, uh, they brought up, um, you know, um, hold on. First time they brought up, oh no, it's kind of crazy. Uh, they brought up the John Cena win about the whole Sola Sokoa thing, which didn't really make sense to me. Cause I was like, more or less bringing that up, I think causes a little bit more, you know, scrutiny and negativity towards Sola Sokoa's name than actually like you know, uh, solidifies it or, you know, causes or causes it glory and stuff. But, um, all in all, I thought it was, it was a good match. It was a great match. A lot of tag team, a lot of uh, people, you know, thinking that Roman Reigns was going to stab someone in the back. Obviously you saw Tamatanga Tangaloa get involved. Then Jimmy Uso returned. And what's what he thought? It couldn't get any better than the rock. The final boss is back in WWE came out, looked at, uh, Rhodes looked at, uh, Roman Reigns with just like, Kind of like disgust. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was like, these two clowns, you know, that's why he was never the tribal chief. And that's why I'm going to take this guy's WWE Undisputed Championship away from him. Uh, in the crowd, Solo Sokoa was caught on social media. Somebody recorded saying that, um, you know, it was uh, saying Solo Sokoa muttering to Jacob Fatu that it's all part of the plan when The Rock came out. So, you know, once again, hinting at the final boss is, uh, you know, pulling the strings behind the whole Solo thing. I feel like Solo will step down and The Rock will reclaim uh, the throne of the Tribal Chief, which is, um, you know, which is the right, which is the right storyline. That's a, that's what I would do with thousand and ten percent. But I don't know. It was kind of crazy. Like I said, he came out and, it, uh, you know, caused a lot of like everybody was excited, like all over wrestling media. It was just it was cool. You know, you love seeing The Rock. Every, you know, you love every single time you can see The Rock on uh, WWE. So I thought that was a. Uh, Super cool. He came out like a freaking, oh my God. And he just looked disgusted. He just looked absolutely just like, really? Is this what the bloodline has come to? Once again, The Rock has to come clean up other people's messes. These jabronis or something. Just kidding, though. No. But uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe he could have said that. Maybe he could have said that. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about our fourth segment. What happened after WWE Bad Blood went off the air? We're going to talk about Kevin Owens' attack on Cody Rhodes and the potential. Well, not really a potential heel turn, because I'm pretty sure that's what WWE is kind of, uh, you know, making serious uh, with this whole attack thing. But we're going to dive deeper into it uh, when we come back. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 